Hello, and welcome to Serverless 101. My name is Eric Johnson, and I'm a principal developer advocate for Serverless at AWS. Serverless 101 is a video series to help you get acquainted with the AWS services that are serverless. In this video, I cover AWS step functions. We'll talk about what it does and when you should use it. Let's get started. AWS Step Functions is a low-code visual workflow service that developers use to build distributed applications, automate IT and business processes, and build data and machine learning pipelines with AWS services. These workflows manage failures, retries, parallelization, service integrations, and observability so developers can focus on higher value business logic. Okay, that was a mouthful, and we have a bit to unpack here. First of all, let's clarify what is meant by visual workflow service. In fact, let's get even more granular and define workflow service. Think about an application that you're working on. In this application, you have a process that needs to happen. This process probably has more than one step and will be considered a workflow. Sometimes these steps are dependent on each other and must be done in a certain order. If steps fail, then the workflow needs to change accordingly. Or it isn't a failure, but a choice needs to be made, and the workflow must handle this as well. Sometimes the steps can all happen at the same time, and the workflow needs to run in parallel. The bottom line is that there is a flow. AWS Step Functions help to manage that flow. In fact, your workflows can be managed visually. Thus, the visual workflow service. Let's take a look at the Step Functions Workflow Studio to get a better look at what I'm talking about. In the Visual Workflow Studio, I can build the workflow step-by-step step for my application. For example, I have a series of records. For each record, I want to look up a value in an Amazon DynamoDB table. Since AWS Step Functions provides a direct integration to DynamoDB, this is easy to do. In fact, Step Functions provides a direct integration into over 200 AWS services using the existing AWS SDK for each service. Okay, back to my workflow. These records are independent from each other, so I can use a map state to run each in parallel. After DynamoDB responds, I then need to decide whether I am creating a new record or updating an existing record. This is based on whether the record exists in DynamoDB. So here, I use a choice state to logically choose which route my workflow should go. The next step is to reformat the data for the third-party API I call to either create or update a record. I then use the API Gateway Invoke task to call a proxy third-party API to update or insert the record. If this call fails, in fact, at each step of the step function, I can configure the step to retry. If a configured number of retries fail, the step can be configured to save the data to a dead letter queue in Amazon SQS and end or move on. So, as you see, I built an application process or workflow without using any code. Instead, I configured step functions to step through my process. This does not mean I will not have any code. If there's a step in my process that requires custom business logic, then I can invoke an AWS Lambda function with my custom code in it. Additionally, if there is a service that does not have an integration in Step Functions, then a Lambda function can be used here as well. However, you can see that the amount of code required is reduced. This is why we call this a low-code service. Additionally, with retry and error handling configuration built into Step Functions, even when I use a Lambda function, I can rely on Step Functions to retry and error out gracefully as needed. To run your workflows, AWS Step Functions offer two types of workflows. Standard workflows, which support all features of Step Functions. For example, these workflows have a maximum duration of up to one year and are priced per state transition. So, if you have a pause for months while waiting for a response, there's no charge during the pause. The other is Express Workflows. These workflows support a subset of Step Function features but are less expensive to run. Express Workflows have a maximum duration of five minutes support a start execution rate of over 100,000 per second, and a nearly unlimited state transition rate. My recommendation is to always start with an express workflow and then upgrade to the standard when needed. In fact, you can get crazy and run express workflows and call a second standard workflow for just that feature. Think efficiently.
Step functions also offer two invocation models. The most common way to invoke a step function is asynchronously. This means that a client doesn't have to wait around while all the steps are executed. However, sometimes you need a synchronous request with a quick response. For this reason, step functions can also be invoked synchronously. This has been a high-level overview of AWS step functions. I encourage you to dig into the individual features of step functions to make it work well for you. For more information about AWS Step Functions and other videos in the Serverless 101 series, follow this QR code. Again, my name is Eric Johnson, and you can connect with me at EDJGeek on Twitter. Thank you.